The Painting with Magic Show is proudly brought to you by BrandonThomasArtSupply.com, home of the Brandon Thomas Signature Product Line, and by the Brandon Thomas Certified Instructor Team. Visit www.BrandonThomasArt.com to find an instructor near you. <laughs> Hey, it's me, it's me, it's Brand T, and welcome back to Painting with Magic. On um, this week, we're going to finish up this pumpkin painting. Uh, last week, we left off with the pumpkin here, as we were developing the pumpkin. And it's trying to look very good, very good. So we can either uh, start to make more slices into the pumpkin, uh, or you can leave it thicker. If you want it bigger like this, you can leave it like that if you want to, but I want to break mine down a little bit more. Uh, and I'll show you more how to do it better. So, um, the colors we were using will go across the screen for you. Uh, same color we used last week. This painting is still wet. This is back to back filming. If anything dries, I'll let you know that. So, everything is still nice and wet. Okay? So, I actually would advise you to wait until this painting is completely done before you start trying this project. Or you can start working on the pumpkin already because we pretty much showed you how to do it last week. Okay, so we're going to continue working on that pumpkin. We're going to take more orange. And we'll continue to mess around with this. Okay. And it's, I actually would recommend to use a newer filbert brush uh, for this pumpkin uh, because it's going to be a lot easier to use than an older one would be. All right. I got a lot of paper towel here. Let me give me a slice, a little chunk of paper towel. Okay. Wipe out the brush. I'm gonna come back in here now and kind of touch it up a little bit. I'm going to take the little brush we're using for the darks. I believe that's the brown same brush. And burnt umber is what I'm gonna take. And we'll come back in here and continue to work out those darker spots and start blending it back just a little bit. This is an older one, so I'm using it for my darker areas. So as we get into the darker areas. You can start to see the contrast now starting to come together. Bring those in here. But I think you're going to be so pleasantly surprised to figure out how easy it is to actually paint you a pumpkin. And I will, like I said on the last episode, I will have a, uh, a pattern uh, design that you can use to lay out your pumpkin with on the website. I'll have a link in a description. Hopefully in this video there will be a description and, and the link below. Okay, so right now we have this going on. I'm not worried about the bottom because we're going to get rid of that bottom. That bottom is going to be covered up with hay and stuff. So, not very important to me. But still, you still need to kind of lay it out. Still because you know what's going to be seen. Now I'm going to start cutting down this pumpkin. I'm going to start adding more slices. So right here I want another big nice chunk. Right there. Or be another wedge, whatever they want to call them. Boom, there's another one. And we can just right here. Okay. Right now it's looking cartoonish. I know. It's looking like a coloring book pumpkin. But we're going to bring it all together as we go. You see, we bring these slices in here. Okay, so right there, 
is the beginning stages of this inner's this inner pumpkin. Um, I'm gonna take a fan brush and I'm gonna kind of blend these out a little bit. Blend them into the orange, just softening it all down. This is gonna really help it become more realistic. Nice softer edges. Right now it's like a basketball. So got to soften this down. Then when we come back with those <clears throat> big beautiful orange strokes, oh, it's gonna come together. And then you can even decide if you even want to break it down anymore. You can even make some areas thicker, some areas thinner, however you want it to go. I'm gonna grab more orange paint. And this is just cadmium orange. Back into the brush we was using. And then we can start to and I look at this, I kinda think I want this one to be one straight plump. So like I said, I want you to break them down, but sometimes you want some areas to be more this one straight plumpy area okay that's good and then right here I do want that to be an individual plump I'm hoping you can see all this stuff on the palette cam. Okay. Let me see, this is a very big gap. I want to close that gap. And then I'm going to I'm going to darken this out. There's different multiple ways to break it down. We'll get darker on this side. Okay, now you can see where I'm going with this, maybe, maybe not. I think we broke that one down. Make a little touch of the classic clear with that. Okay, now I want to kind of blend this a little bit here. I'm going to take a look at this real quick myself and see where I want to take it to. So we broke it down to some areas. Some areas were still leaving thicker. 
but that's just how you design your pumpkin. So make sure, see we're bringing it down, but we're also leaving some areas thick. Because you need those middle sections to be thicker like that. We have our outside pumpkin edge. Boom. And we soften them down into the dark edge. Alright, there's that one. And then over here we have that another plump. I'm going to broke it down just a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> Need some more darks in some of these areas. So maybe we have the contrast. I'm going to push a little firmer. I'll get a little more dark in here. Need a little more dark over here, really. Okay, that well, looks pretty good. Now we can continue to add, this is back and forth, always back and forth. When you're working with highlights and shadows, uh, painting mountains are the same way. Back and forth. I always want to go back and forth with everything. Okay, that's looking good now. It's starting to really come together. See that pumpkin? We're here on this side over here. It's kind of recrisped up some of those edges. Okay, I'm liking that pretty good, actually. So far, I think we got our pumpkin basically outlined. I'm basically almost finished. So we're going to take white now and add to the orange with a little yellow as well. And we're going to start to make this thing come even more alive. Right there in the centers of those plump areas. Just in a few. Start seeing that really become more realistic looking. Okay, and this is an overhand grip just to throw in some paint. Okay, then I can take another. Silver brush, and I can kind of soften it down just a little bit. I still want some of those brush strokes because they kind of give me that texture of the pumpkin. Look at all those. Good. I think we're good to go. Maybe another layer would be nice. But again, this is all wet, wet on wet painting. 
I'll do some more titanium white into that and some classic clear into there just right in some of those areas So we kind of messed that little bit there, but we can come back and just go, boom. Okay, I like that pretty good. Okay, so hopefully that looks pretty good to you, but you know, like I said, whenever you're filming and painting in your own studio, it's two different things. So it looks pretty good to me. It looks pretty good to me. Okay, so there is the pumpkin. Looks like it's a pretty much finished product. Um, you can even, if you want to, you could soften it even a little bit with the uh, with that hate brush in some areas if you want to, just a one corner. But leave the texture. That's what oil paint is all about, is all that nice, beautiful texture. And then we'll kind of clean the ends. Now it's time for some uh, um, hay down here. So let's do some hay. Hopefully, we'll have time to do some hay. Let's put that in paper towel real quick. Yeah, we still got time for some hay. I think I'm going to grab some more yellow. I'm going to go right into that orange we was using before. I'm going to use a fan brush. A number three fan brush. Let me put it right up here so you, can, so you can see it. Okay. So now let's go ahead and put some hay in here now. So we're going to stay nicely loaded to a nice chiseled edge. And then we'll come here and make a stroke like that. It's a little yellow so I want a little more brown to that. There, that's better. Now go right over top of that pumpkin. This hay is very, very easy to do. I think you're going to enjoy it once you figure out how to do it. We're just going to use the fan brush. That easy. Straight strokes. Get that right on this part of the fan brush. We're using this section right here. Okay? I just want more brown in there. Yellow ochre would be a good color to use in here. But hay goes all kinds of different ways. Go right over that pumpkin. Right now it kind of looks like a mess, but we're going to want to add a little yellow, yellow ochre on the palette. It'll be a little easier. I think everybody's got a little yellow ochre, I think, in their toolbox. Okay. Boom. There goes some beautiful hay. And we can just make it come up however far you want to come up. And this is just the first part of the hay. You can come down here and do some rocky motions like that to kind of put the hay every which way. There you have some hay coming through. And then it kind of let it die out as it goes away from the light in the area. Maybe more orange into that. Okay. And it kind of die out. 
as it goes away. Okay, so that's one part of that. Let's have another brush. I like more need more burnt umber if I can find it. I have paint laying all the way down through here. There it is. Some burnt umber. And then we can add some shadow ones too. See? Look at there. See, we're not done yet. We can add just a little of that medium to it. See, there's different shadow and you can have your hay going around. I get this to come off the brush a little better. Maybe a little more medium. Boom. But this is just the underbasing for all the hay. We're going to come back with that liner brush and kind of add a few more. And on that side as well. So we have all that nice beautiful hay down here at the bottom. Now we take our script liner brush and we can throw some of the dark ones on like this. Hold the brush kind of flat and then you kind of give it a pull. That's how you bring some of these more detailed Hey, through. Look at there. There we go. Boom. Got some hay going on. We can do it hell every way. You want to do it. Just more detailed strokes of hay. Yeah. These are the shadow ones. We'll come back and we'll add some highlight ones. I kind of seem like faster that you kind of go with it. Well, more experienced you are, the more faster you can go. Those one solid strokes really do look better than kind of fiddling around with. Because hay goes everywhere. Hay goes everywhere. If you ever mess with around with hay, I have chickens, so we have to have all that hay in there. So it goes everywhere. So don't be don't be scared about it. Let's go boom, boom, boom. There's your hay. You can take a little bit of purple if you want to and darken it up a little because we have yellow in our purple is complementary color of yellow, so you can throw a little bit of that in there. Okay, so boom boom boom. This painting is pretty much finished and I'm only got a few more minutes left here, so I'll go ahead and I'll clean off my liner brush and I'll go ahead and add a few of the highlight ones before we have to cut out of here. Okay, so we'll just thin all that down. Some wides in there. Okay, you can really add in some now, some nice, beautiful, highlighted hay. Well, the hay goes all over the place. Beautiful hay. Alrighty, I think with that I have a pretty much a finished little painting in here. You can take this however far you want it to go. But I think I'm pretty happy with this little pumpkin. Um, spend more time on it at home. You could do this pumpkin at home. Just, just take your time with it. I only have 30 minute segments I can do. So this is pretty much finished. I'm going to go ahead and sign this painting. And then I think I'll sign it. I think I'll sign it with some. With some green. And some white. There we go. But this is a fun and great project to do. I'm going to go ahead and sign mine Ray over here. Okay. 
Okay. And this one is a finished painting. Ready to go. It's a fun project. I really hope you try it out. If you try it out, send it to me at brandthomasart at aol.com. I'd love to see what you do. If you're interested in taking workshops, I do have workshops around the country, around the Kentucky area as well. And I have many, many different instructors all around the country, some in Canada. And you can take a workshop just like this one with one of my instructors. Please subscribe, like, and share these videos. Please comment below. Visit BrandonThomasArt.com and BrandonThomasArtSupply.com for more helpful tips and tricks and videos just like this one. If this one's ready for the art gallery, so is yours. And I'll see you real soon. Mm -hmm.